Okay, good afternoon. So today I'm going to talk about the rise of mestizo nationalism and the Mexican Revolution. We're going to start with mestizo nationalism. In the early 20th century, uh, there was an intellectual movement uh, that uh, kind of permeated out into popular society so that it became uh, widespread that uh, celebrated mestizo nationalism is the term that usually gets used. So what's the difference between mestizo nationalism and traditional or regular nationalism, the nationalism we've seen before? So up here you see traditional nationalism. This is the nationalism that you study in Western civilization. Uh, the idea of a notion of a shared culture creating a people. Um, so uh, the fact that the idea that there is something about Germans that uh, unifies them as a people even though there wasn't a Germany until 1871. Uh, what do I mean when I say shared culture? What I mean here is I'm talking about shared language, shared history, shared religion, uh, some sort of commonality, even if it's imagined as often happens. Um, but the idea that, uh, so Italy's broken up into four countries, it should be one country, why? Because we're all Italians, because we all speak Italian, and we all have this shared history with the Roman Empire and all of that. Additionally, common ancestry. Now what this means is, the fact that even if um, uh, you are um, someone who, for example, lives in Italy and speaks Italian, and, um, uh, is, but you are of African descent, some might object to the idea that you are Italian, that there, is some, that there needs to be some kind of a, a phenotypical uh, commonality as well. And this becomes kind of the racial vision of what it means to be German or to be Italian or to be British. Um, uh, and that's traditional nationalism. So the this, this stuff that sort of swept Europe and then later, uh, Europe in the 19th century and then later the world in the 20th century. So how is that any different than mestizo nationalism? So mestizo nationalism also has the idea of a shared culture, a shared language, a shared religion, a shared history. Uh, but common ancestry now is no longer this uh, vision of everyone has to more or less look the same. In fact, mestizo nationalism, keep in mind mestizo meaning mixed, uh, relies on the idea of mixed race as the common factor. Um, this is a celebration of mixing as positive. Um, that the idea that mixing is no longer a bad thing. So instead of traditional nationalism, which generally tends to celebrate a kind of purity, as a, so you are a, a totally German, therefore you are you're a better part of the community, um, that uh, mestizo nationalism actually rejects the idea of purity and in fact celebrates mixing. It says the way that, we, what does it mean to be Latin American? It means to be part Amerindian, it means to be part African, it means to be part Spaniard means to be part Portuguese, etc., etc. So the mixing is the thing that defines the nation. So who are these new nationalists? Um, they can be any of these things, or even all of these things, but not necessarily all of them. So oftentimes they're middle class and they're urban. They're people who have, have received some level of education are starting to realize that um, uh, the old idea of kind of Eurocentric superiority isn't really giving them the kind of access to power that they would like. Additionally, obviously, mixed race people. Uh, it's hard for someone who is of mixed race to argue that, well, European blood is inherently superior since they themselves have something other than just European blood. Uh, but in general, if you want to kind of uh, create one big word of group, uh, it's all the people who didn't really benefit from that big export boom that happened following the reassertion um, of the liberals, uh, transportation revolution from the 1850s going into 1900. Uh, as we talked about, large landowners profited tremendously off of this export boom, but many people did not. Oftentimes, it's the people who didn't really get um, the, the advantages of this export boom. Okay, so those, that's who, who the nationalists were. Let's talk about what they thought. There we go, perfect. <laughs> so, number one, they are against foreign intervention, whether it's economic or military. And we're especially talking here about the United States. Uh, the United States, uh, as we uh, saw in the um, uh, discussion of uh, um, nationalism, things like uh, the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine, that the United States had, uh, beginning in the 20th, beginning, well, in the late 19th, early 20th century, really started intervening militarily in um, Latin America. It occupied, it occupied Haiti, it occupied Cuba, it 
occupied a whole bunch of different places and then exercised a huge amount of economic control too. So even if we didn't send in troops, we could use the threat of tr uh, trade embargoes and that sort of thing. Later on, we'll see the communist revolution in Cuba, this is what we use. Um, these nationalists are against that. They, they stress the idea of Latin American sovereignty. Along with that, they embrace the mestizo, or as the Portuguese, mestizo, uh, population as representing the best of Latin America. This is huge, which leads us up to our big idea. This represents the first widespread break with Eurocentric racist ideas. Um, here we're talking about people like Sarmiento in Facundo, um, Alberde in uh, Roads to the Future. The idea that what Latin America needs is white blood. They need, they need the, the blood of Europeans in order to clear up a kind of racial handicap. This nationalism represents the first very serious and really widespread popular break with that notion. It, it, uh, uh, even Bolivar had talked about um, kind of you know, a certain amount of racial handicap that, that Latin America might have. Uh, and also, now what this does is it sees the majority of Latin American population as actually an asset. This has never happened before. Bolivar talked about how, oh, it'll be great in the future when we're able to have a republic. But for now, people aren't ready. And when the liberals come to power, they, they want the right people in charge. They want people who are civilized. All of this is racialized, generally meaning whites. Um, but what this now does is it sees the majority of the Latin American population, which in most countries, the mestizo population, the mestizo population is the majority, part Amerindian or part African or part of a whole lot of other things. Um, and this now celebrates the people, instead of being a problem to be solved, rather an asset, the, the great resource which Latin America will be able to use to, um, to move forward and, and envision a new sort of progress, a progress that won't just help the top, but will help everyone. Um, okay, next I'm going to talk about the Mexican Revolution.